Life on the Nile. Desert covers more than 90% of Egypt and the climate is hot and dry. Egyptian civilization was only able to flourish thanks to the Nile River, which flooded once a year, spreading rich, dark silt across the fields. Most Egyptians lived on the banks of the Nile in a fertile area called Kemet, or the Black Land. The barren desert beyond this strip of farmland was called the Red Land. The farming year began with the Nile's annual flood. When the waters finally retreated, the farmers got to work sowing barley, flax, and emmer wheat. The result was usually a good summer harvest. Famine. This statue shows a man begging for food. The extreme climate meant that the crops sometimes failed, leading to famine. A Riverside People. The Egyptians lived on a fertile strip on each side of the Nile. The floodplain is shown in green. Herdsman driving cattle with a stick. Scribe with his palate. Sickle. Farmers cut the crops using simple tools such as this wooden sickle with flint teeth. The stalks left behind would be gathered to make mats and baskets. Flint cutting edge. Winnowing. The grain and chaff were thrown into the air so that the lighter husks were blown away, leaving the grain to fall to the floor. This process is called winnowing. Winnowing fan. Two wooden fans like this one were used to separate the grain from the chaff or husk. Shaduf. The farmers dug canals to transport water to the fields. To raise the water to fill the canals, the Egyptians used a device called the shaduf, a trellis supporting a pole with a counterweight. The bucket was lowered into the river, then pulled up with the help of the weight. Meketri, owner of the cattle. Meketri's son. Cattle counting. In ancient Egypt, wealth was measured by the number of cattle a person owned. This tomb model shows Meketri, the mayor of Thebes in circa 2000 BCE. The town's officials are counting his cattle for tax records. Scribes. Reading and writing were important skills in ancient Egypt. Official record keepers, known as scribes, held high positions in Egyptian society. One scribe, Haremheb, even became king. The training was thorough. Boys had to train for about five years from the age of nine. They learned to carve hieroglyphs, or picture symbols, into stone and write on sheets of papyrus with mineral pigments. Once qualified, scribes would be free from paying taxes and doing national service during times of flood. Ready for work. Scribes were often shown sitting cross-legged with their papyrus. Hole for ink. Bushy top of plant. Stem used for writing material. Papyrus. This triangular stemmed reed about 13 feet or 4 meters tall grew along the banks of the Nile. It vanished due to overuse for boats, rope, sandals, and writing material. Goose census. This scribe is counting geese on a nobleman's estate. He will enter the total number on his scroll for tax records. Outer rind peeled away. Inner pith cut into strips. Stone, mallet, alternate layers. Papyrus sheets. Strips of pith were laid in two layers, one vertical, the next horizontal. They were covered with linen and flattened with stones or a mallet. Eventually, the strips would bind together in their own sap. Grinder for crushing pigments. Art palette. This palette belonged to a royal scribe. His pigments would have been made from red ochre or blue or green minerals. Black was made from soot or charcoal. Draftsman. Scribes called draftsmen were sometimes asked to design royal monuments. Unfinished tombs like that of King Horemheb show the stages involved in designing and painting. First, junior artists drew the scenes in red ochre on dry plaster. Next, senior artists outlined corrections in black. The painters would then fill in the outlines with color. Sketch of Tuthmosis III. The artist drew the figure of the king on a grid to get the right proportions. Wooden palette. Most scribes had a portable wooden palette like this, which they took on their travels. Name of Ramesses. Scribes and supervisor. These two scribes appear to be writing down the words of their supervisor on their scrolls. A document container stands in front of them. Read brushes for precision writing. Sign for scribe. 
This hieroglyphic sign shows a brush holder, a water pot, and a palette, together making up the Egyptian word for a scribe. Brushes. The thick brush made of papyrus twine would have been used to paint large walls. The smaller one was probably used to paint hieroglyphs on statues. Writing. Scribes had to be experts in writing hieroglyphs, a form of picture writing with about 700 different signs. Hieroglyphs were used on tombs, monuments, and in religious texts. The hieratic script was a faster version of hieroglyphs and was used for everyday purposes. Later, the simpler demotic script was used to write legal documents. At the end of Egyptian civilization, scribes had to be able to write Greek, the language of their overlords. Label. Scribes used tags like this to label their scrolls. This tag dates from the reign of Amenhotep III. Imhotep. This talented scribe lived 4,500 years ago. He was a high priest of the sun god, as well as being the designer of the first pyramid at Saqqara. Two scripts. Scribes usually use the faster hieratic script to write on papyrus, above left. Hieroglyphs are used above the figures. Royal door plate. This metal plate reads, there shall always exist the son of Re whom he loves, Amenhotep, the god ruler of Thebes. King's name contained an oval border called a cartouche cylinder seal. This seal bears the name of King Mariah and one of his officials. To the right is the impression showing the complete surface of the seal. Cartouche bearing name of King Mariah, name of Mariah's official. The Rosetta Stone. When the last temple was closed in the 6th century CE, the ability to read hieroglyphs was lost until the stone was discovered in 1799. On the stone are three scripts. The bottom section is in Greek, the center is demotic, and the top is in hieroglyphs. The three scripts contain the same text, so by reading the Greek script, archaeologists could translate the other two and decipher the hieroglyphs. Small scarab. Underside. Top. Scarab seal. Stamp seals included names, titles, or information that the owner would stamp on clay or papyrus. The scarab seal tells us that Amenhotep III killed 102 lions during his reign. Hieroglyphs. Scribes chose pictures for their script from the world around them. The barn owl represented the consonant M. On the carving in the picture, it forms part of the royal name, Amen M. Hat. Translator. The Rosetta Stone was found at Rosetta in the Western Delta. After many years of study, French scholar Jean-Francois Champollion finally deciphered it in 1822. Bring the stone. As the stone contained royal names such as Ptolemy, their equivalents could be found in the hieroglyphs at the top. From this, the hieroglyphs making other words could be gradually deciphered. Notebook. Some hieroglyphic signs needed a lot of practice from pupil scribes. Here, a scribe has been practicing the duckling hieroglyph, which was used in writing the word for prime minister.